This was an absolute steal. I found it at a local charity store for just £25. I think probably it was cheap because it's quite beaten up, especially the top surface. And the tutorial is going to be more about the wood finish and how we can kind of rectify some of the issues on the top and make that good. The lower half is going to have a flat painted finish, just one colour, no detail. I kind of wanted it to be um, just paint and wood, kind of Scandinavian inspired, but with a modern twist. I have lots of oldie worldy things in the house. I want to keep this kind of con contemporary, country, Scandi, contemporary, all of those things. Um, let's see if we can make real good of this coffee table and let's have a closer look. And off we go. So I've spent a little time looking at the top of this piece of furniture and it does release. There are screws underneath so I thought it might be a good idea to work on the top of this piece of furniture separately to the bottom. So I'm going in with my screwdriver just releasing all of the screws to remove that. And actually whilst I was in the cabinet I'm looking at the timber that is beneath. Now this looks pretty good. Here it is, you can see it, all of the screws released. I'm thinking this could be one of those pieces of furniture that I actually flip the top upside down and start with a new surface. So let's get the um, lower half off this piece of furniture and we can take a greater look at the timber. So now that I have the top of the coffee table released from the lower half, the first thing that I notice is I prefer the wood that sits on the underneath. Now, you might think, well, it's the same wood right the way through. Well, it isn't. It's got um, quite a thick veneer on the top and the grain is very tight. And on the lower half, the grain is quite um, grainy and I quite like that grainy finish. I, I much prefer it actually. So I'm thinking what we could do here is rather than work with the original surface, we're gonna flip this, we're gonna fill the holes, we're gonna try and touch up the edges of the veneer around the edge because the veneer around the edge has got a few bashes and chips with a, a two-part filler. So this is a, a, a wood-based filler which Hard, it's got a, a hardener in the filler, so it will go off much quicker. Um, I'm not keen on filling the edges of things because they can chip away, 
but we're going to give it a go. If that fails, I will remove the veneer strips from the edges of the whole piece and sand down to this timber because this timber here, I really love it. The pattern is a bit repetitive. This has been um, laminated together. So it's lots of boards that have been glued together to create strength. And then that's why they've put the um, huge sheet of good veneer on the top. So there isn't all of those connections, but I like it and I think it should be shown. So we're gonna flip this around, I think. Fingers crossed it will work. Let me show you the underside because you can see what we had. It's kind of a, a tighter grain on the underneath, but I really like the rustic charm of the top, the underneath surface. And I think we're gonna try and fix that rather than fixing this. There is a big scratch through it. So we'd have to sand a lot more than we will do on this because this really doesn't have that much finish. So let's start with two part filler in all of the screw holes. If there's an issue with that showing through at the end, we'll be very careful and we'll go in a fine brush and we'll just add some grain, a little trick just to make them vanish. Like I said, I have no idea what's gonna happen with the edges of the veneer um, around the, the banding. It may have to come off, but we'll try with the filler first, sand it through and see what we get. Okay, so let's just pause for one moment. I've had epic fail number one on this piece of furniture and I have to be really honest and tell you guys what's happened. So I've gone in with the sander. This is not a heavy grit um, sandpaper that I'm using. It's kind of medium. And I've started sanding away where the screw marks were just to go down a little bit, just to level that screw head and it is chipboard underneath. This is not real wood. It caught me out. I actually thought this was real wood because it's so heavy, but it's actually chipboard veneered all the way around. Slightly different veneer on this side to the other side. There's nothing more I can do about what it's done. I can't go with that because it will show through my colour wash and the, the grain's gone. So I'm down to chipboard. So I have two options. Um, the next option is to flip it and go with the original um, veneer on the top. I think this is slightly thicker because I can tell by the edges, the edge strips. I think it's about two or three mil deep. So we can try that and hope for the best. If I hit the chipboard again, I will probably do a fully painted coffee table and do something interesting on the top. Never mind, these things happen. 
Um, the next step is just flip this around. I don't have any um, liquid stripper, so that would have been one of the things that I would have done and I want to crack on, so I'm gonna go with sanding. Um, liquid stripper, you know, something that will ultimately remove the varnish and then you can do a lighter sand would be better. I'm gonna risk it for a biscuit. Let's just go back in with the other side and take it down a little bit. There's one flaw in that I have a big old scratch going through the grain in the opposite way. If I fill that, that's gonna show. Let's just go with it and see what happens. So onto the other side. So I've sanded it as much as I dare to. Now I can fix most of the balance of colour with my colour wash. I'm going to make this really sort of bleached looking anyhow. Um, one problem that I've got is this along the edge, there was a deep um, scratch all the way along this edge that I dare not go any further with the sandpaper to remove that. There's a little bit on the edge where it was slightly deep and I went just to the veneer, only just. Um, some of this, where it's taken some of the grain away, um, where I've gone quite deep, I'm gonna remedy that with a pen, a ballpoint pen. I'm gonna hand draw some of these um, little streaky marks. There's also an area that I'm not too keen on I thought it was a watermark, it's a blemish in the wood, so I've got to do that just, I don't know if you can see that, just here. Um, so I'm gonna add some grainy marks through that area. These patches are part of the wood, actually. I thought I needed to sand them more, there's still finish on there, but they're not. This is part of the wood. So hopefully my um, colour wash will blend all of that away just only allowing some of this grain just to peek through. I just want it to be soft, mellow wood. Fingers crossed, I'm now gonna take a lot of time filling in these little um, grain marks, which I think will make all of the dif difference. What I will do is, in certain areas, I'll push this pen quite deep so it creates a groove. I'm gonna go with the grain and mimic what's there. Yes, it's long-winded, but I think it will make the world of, of, of a difference to this. There's also a chip up here that I'm gonna fill with the filler and sand that again, and then maybe put some of these low lights in with the pen, and then sand the sides. There'll be a bit of work on the side as well, and then we can get stuck in with the wash. Let's get this really nice, um, and hopefully it'll look very consistent all the way across, fingers crossed. So, pen, take some time to get this done.
Okay, I'm winning. I feel like I'm winning with this. Although this looks kind of patchy, that is the wood grain. All of the finish is off and I'm going to um, stain this, kind of neutralise the colour. One thing that I'm going to do ahead of this, the filler that is on the edge, you might be able to see a bit here, on the corners, I'm going to paint them in. How I'm going to do that, I'm going to use a mix of Country Grey and Arles. This is pine um, filler. You shouldn't really need to do that, but it's belt and braces. I just want to make sure that that is well disguised. The colour wash is going to be kind of translucent, so I want to make sure that that is on and dried before we start moving into the colour wash. Okay, so I'm now about to start my colour wash or stain to the timber. This wood, although it looks quite pale, it is quite orange. If you wet your wood with a little bit of water, you'll see the true colour of the wood and there's an awful lot of orange tones in this wood. So I'm gonna knock out those orange tones and make it more paler, Scandi kind of feel. Coastal, if you want that vibe and I'm going to use Versailles. Now Versailles is a great colour for a colour wash, especially over mahogany. Um, it's got lots of red tones and Versailles has a lot of green tones, so it's going to counteract the warmth in the timber. Now also, I've come across another issue. Um, you're learning with me, I'm learning. A lot of this I'm just putting together as I go along, as I hit the, the issues and this project, I'm literally thinking on my toes. So remember the pen marks that I've added for the grain? As I was putting the um, country grey and arles in certain areas, I could see that the ink was kind of um, coming to life. So it may get a hot mess. I don't know because there's gonna be lots of water. One thing that I have done with it is, you can see my sleeve. I've been, In the areas where the ink is, I've been kind of burnishing it. So I'm using my sleeve and I'm really rubbish, rubbing the timber in the hope that that friction and that warmth will bed that ink into the timber. It's just a try. I have no idea what's going to happen. So let's get stuck in. We'll mix up a colour wash. I'm going to go somewhere around 50-50 um, water, maybe a little bit less paint, sort of 45% paint to water. Um, and then we're going to get this whole thing wet and then apply the wash and remove it with a soft lint-free cloth balled up just to take away the surplus paint until I'm happy that I can slightly see the grain and I'm going to leave it to dry overnight. So I'm going to talk you through a colour wash slash wood stain using chalk paint. Take a small container, apply your paint and water I kind of just eyeball this, no correct measurements for me. As you can see, I've saturated the whole surface of the timber using a damp cloth. 
Then I'm going in with a wide brush and applying the color wash, making sure to always check the edges of your project, not to forget to add any of the color wash slash wood stain. And here I am going in with a wrung out cloth. This is a lint-free cloth, nothing too scratchy. And I'm offloading some of the paint going with the grain. Then at this point, I decided to take another clean, wide synthetic brush just to soften in the color wash and stain to the surface. I don't normally do this. The cloth normally works just as is until I'm happy. But for some reason, I think it's because this timber has a tight grain. I felt like that I needed to really soften the color wash in. So I'm just working it until you can see that the stain is slowly, slowly drying and pushing into the surface of the timber. Don't forget to check all of your edges, not to miss anywhere on the sides. And this should be about it. I'm gonna leave this overnight to dry, ready for waxing in the morning. So I'm now on day two of my project. I've left this colour stain wash to dry overnight and I've come back in the workshop this morning, glorious day outside, and it looks absolutely amazing. So remember what it came from, this sort of colour, this is the draw. So you can see the difference in the wood tone. This will darken up slightly when the wax hits it should you use wax. You could use lacquer on the surface of this. I'm gonna use wax because I like a wax finish. It's kind of mellow. There may be one or two problems as we go along. I'm kind of thinking ahead that we could have another disaster. And that could be the fact that the ink, again, from the pen could react with the wax because it's a solvent-based product. I know you're all thinking, don't do it, just use lacquer. I just like wax and I like a risk. So we're gonna go in with a clear coat of wax on the surface of this. Like I said, it will get darker and over the next 24 hours, it will mellow back down. Um, hopefully, fingers crossed, this will work out really beautifully. I'm not gonna aggravate it too much with a brush. I'm just gonna apply the, the wax with the grain and then just offload with a rag. So. Let's go for it. So the coffee table top turned out super well. None of that pen shifted with the wax. I'm super happy with the mellow feel of the wax finish. Now time to turn attention to the base. One thing that I want to point out, you may be able to see this on camera. Look at this. This is the timber with a veneered finish either side. When I took that top off, I should have known better not to sand through to the veneer, but hey ho, we got there, we fixed it. I'm really happy. So the base color of this, I'm going for a flat chalk painted finish and I've got a couple of ideas for color, one of which is Primer Red. Now, the reason that I love Primer Red, I've got lots of red brick around the property 
and lots of windows look out onto sort of brickwork. So I like to bring that into the house, just in little pots. And also we have a mint and tiled floor, which is brick red. And this is going in the next room. So I love that idea of just carrying a colour from one room to another. That was my gut feeling to go with that. I may go really wrong with this. Um, Mr M is not keen on my idea. I'm going to go for a rose pink. Now, the other reason that I'm choosing rose pink, the sitting room that this is going into, there's lots of green. I've got my artwork on the wall and there's some pond lilies in there, just a little bit of pond lily with pink on there. There's a, a vase of flowers that's pink and green and pink work really well. So I'm gonna mix up a really lovely tone of pink, sort of rustic pink. Um, again, wish me luck. Let's hope this looks really well. If it doesn't, it's just a case of painting over the base again. No, no love lost there. So let's get stuck into mixing up a gorgeous pink. So let's have a little fun with mixing a sort of rustic pink. I'm gonna start with my pink tone, which is quite a strong color. I'm gonna start with Scandinavian pink and I love this as is. I've used it lots of time, but I'm gonna neutralize it with a green. So I've got on Thebes and Versailles, which has got a green undertone. I might not use this. And I also want to add a little bit of blue in there just to make it more of a sort of purpley pink. So I've got Louis blue, which should also lighten it. I'm gonna start with the Scandinavian pink and I'm just gonna build this up. This is the best part of mixing colors, just adding your color slowly. So we're gonna go with slightly more Scandinavian pink as my base. There we go. See, you can see how much I mix colors look. All sorts of things on the can. And then I'm gonna go in with the Louis Blue, I think, just to kind of make that a little bit more purple. I've got to make sure that I mix plenty for the whole project. And which other color? We're gonna pop a little touch of Antibes Green in there. This is a really old can. Right, let's go with that and see what we get. I'm probably gonna lighten this with white as well. I don't want an earthy pink, I want a more of a rosy pink. So at the minute, it's still looking quite salmon in its tone. There must be a lot of yellow in Scandinavian pink. Oh, actually, I don't know, it's quite nice. Let's add, let's add a touch of Versailles as well. Let's throw it all in. And then we'll go with a bit of old white, I think. Still quite fleshy in tone, so we're gonna go with more blue, knock out a little bit of, make it more purpley in its tone. My color mix is finished. I did go back and add a touch of burgundy. I felt like it was a bit too, to the salmon-y side of pink and lots of old white just to break it up. I've done kind of a sample board just to see what color it turned out. So I've got a couple of tones on here as I was mixing. So check out your color before starting to paint. Also, I've used a separate container. So once I've mixed all of that, I've poured into a fresh container because when you're mixing colors up, you can get different tones around the edge of your bowl 
and you don't want to contaminate the colour as you're painting. So it's in a fresh bowl, mixed again, so it's nice and well mixed so we can start painting. So I've got a little bit of prep work to do, a bit of sanding on some of the filled edges, some masking tape. I'm gonna remove the handles from the drawer. I might tinker around with the handles. They are silver, silver works really well with pink. Probably not in my house. I've got lots of um, features with black. So we're gonna change them up, I think, just a little bit, leave some of the silver. So let's get cracking. We can start painting and see how this looks. So I'm back in my jacket. I think this tutorial has had more costume changes than a stage production. But nevertheless, I'm moving on to address these gorgeous little handles. Now, I love the finish on them, but I just think that it's not quite dark enough for the overall look in my room. So I'm going to pep them up with a little bit of spray paint. This is just a black matte spray paint. I'm not going to go too heavy. I don't want to lose the silvery look to these. I just want to dull them down and make them a little bit more um, darker and more vintage in their appearance. So I'm going to mask up and I'm just going to spray some um, spray paint at distance. So we get a light spattering, little speckles over the top of these handles, which should just slightly darken it up and we'll still see the silvery tones coming through.
Okay, so I'm nearing the end of the project. I'm not too sure whether I love my colour mix. I think it looks more Peppa Pig than Vintage Rose. Anyhow, it may look very different in situ. It's really difficult when you've got to place a piece of furniture in a room and painting it away from that room, looking at the colour scheme. But I'm not going to worry about this. I've got a few things to do to complete this project and it's getting rather late. So I'm going to sign out here at this point, but you can watch me work at speed on fast play. Um, I've got the waxing to do, the handles to apply, and of course, put the wooden top back into place. Um, one thing I would like to say is there's many new followers on my channel, so I want to welcome you all. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're new here. Thumbs up throughout the video, that really helps the algorithms. It pushes it far and wide and we get lots of new painted lovers joining us each week when we do the live premiere. So thank you to all new and existing painted lovers. I will see you all next time. Take care.